Hello everyone and welcome to another video by Jerry Brewer of East Bay Hitting Instruction and this one is on the importance of the rear scapulas, protraction and upper rotation. So that's really a mouthful and about as unattractive title as I could come up with. So you know what's the motivation behind this video and why do I think this is the worst time spending? And so basically the motivation behind this is when I used to play all hitting coach talked about was was uh, extension and I don't want to date myself on when this was but it was very, very important, and it was just pretty much the greatest thing ever. It's just like, if you're not hitting well, well, your extension must not be good. If you're getting a distension, you have a good swing. And then came along the video craze, and everyone has access to video, and we said, hey, you know, at contact, guys are not extended. They have this, this rear, the rear arm is, is bent. You know, extension's not important, blah, blah, blah. And I, I've been on that, on that side of the story as well. But I want us to, to say, hey, maybe this has gone too far. You know, maybe these guys back then had something, had something to do extension. Maybe it is important, and, and I want to say it is. And what we're going to see is that good extension is going to come with good scapular function, all right? And so when we talk about scap function and hitting, it's always about the load. I've shown this video so many times. You know, I'm guilty of this as well. Oh, here comes too low, really pinching the scap, really getting this move down here. And, you know, we're going to show in a second, this is downward rotation and retraction of the scapula. You know, just, oh, wow, load, load, load. But we never say anything else beyond that, you know? Now, you know, as we kind of go through this clip, I would say 95% of the people who watch this clip have seen it probably a hundred times and you know, don't know what Tulo did with this pitch, but I'll just leave that as a little bit of mystery. But, you know, going to scapular articulations, like I said, you know, the load is basically scapular retraction down the rotation. Now, what does that mean? Well, when your scapula moves downward and retracts, basically it's to bring your arms closer to the body, okay? The example of that is like if you really pull someone in close and give them a nice tight squeeze, you know, you're going to feel your shoulder blades pinch together, and that's that's retraction and downward rotation. And so, again, it's just bringing your arms closer to your body. And so the, the reverse of this is, is, is protraction and upper rotation, basically, if you look at the medial border or the the part of the spine that's close, or the part of the scap that's close to the spine, you know, as it moves away from the spine, that's where we get into protraction and upper rotation. And again, that's to move the arms farther away from the body. Okay, and so you can just really do this if you go Frankenstein, you know, out in front of you, or you're reaching for some cookies on the shelf, and you reach your arms out, and you need a couple more inches, and you really just roll your your shoulders forward. Now that's basically scap or rotation or protraction. It's really, like I said, moving this this inside border of your scap away from your spine, okay? And so, you know, for, for scapular articulation in general, I mean, what's the scap's role is really to facilitate shoulder function or moving the arm, okay? They kind of go together. And so, like, again, like, it, you wouldn't really want to upperly rotate your scap unless you want to move your arm that way. They kind of they uh, work as a pair, and really the scap facilitates this, and it has a big role in both providing movement for the arm and also stabilizing the shoulder joint so it's got a lot to do so the scap is very important i understand that and so i understand when we talk about down rotation but let's just also reverse and say hey let's get the scap moving freely let's get it upper rotating as well okay so it's going to be a big point of this conversation is that we need to have good free um, motion of the scap so where does this play into our hitting like i said basically it's going to allow us to stay through the ball like i said if we don't have a freely moving scap if we just really lock that thing down and we just rotate, you can really just do that by yourself right now, you're going to see you're going to cut across the ball, okay? And so, you know, I, I work with a lot of high school hitters, and, you know, I would say that's, I don't know if it's number one, but it's, it's a very high fault I see a lot. It's basically guys cutting across the ball and just really just finishing down by your waist and just really slicing across the ball. You know, beyond that, making adjustments to our hand path, basically, if it's locked down and we just rotate, our hand path is very circular. And so we're not allowed to get our hands out and really extend our hands if we need to make an adjustment. And basically, you know, for early on a pitch, and we need to extend out and, and get a little more hand path. And like I said, you know, good protraction upper rotation is the key to getting extension. And I say here it's a good look, you know, it just makes a good looking swing. And that's, there's something to that. If you have a good looking swing, if you have a good extension, it looks like you're on the path long. You know, scouts are going to like your swing. Coaches are going to like your swing. You're not going to screw with you as much. So extension really is an important thing. I mean, just, it, it, it has several roles and it has, it has role in aesthetics. And, you know, really looking cool is really the most important thing. Okay, so let's look at some hitters here. And we're going to go through three clips. And I should say that all three of these clips are some of my all-time favorites for different reasons. But none of them are what I call A swings. These are... Swings that hitters had to do, maybe on tough pitches or, or whatnot. But let's just go through Buster Posey. And I've shown this clip before. And so playing this clip, this is a 95-mile-hour fastball that David Price really tries to work in on his hands. You can see, like, you know, he's upset that he hit this one out. This is a pretty good pitch. 
And you know, going back to the front, you can really already see here, again, did he cut across his body here and just two hop this down to the third baseman? He really went through this ball. And this is, again, a pitch that's coming in on his hands. He had a choice here. He can just yank this over and try again in a few innings. But he really, really went through this thing. Okay, going to the side, we can see here how he's going to keep his top hand really bottom up as long as possible and really allow his hand path to get longer. Really go out and get through this ball. Okay, really get this thing through. And you can see this thing right here. He's, he's getting this position. He's really allowed this scap to move away from his spine and get into protraction and a little bit upper rotation. This is really, really important. Basically, his, his shoulders are extended, so he's got some, some tilt and some upper rotation of his spine. Okay, so a really, really good movement there that he would have a hard time doing if he was locked down. And here's Carlos Correa. So the context in this pitch is this is a 95 mile hour fastball that Correa is laid on. And so he's not going to have a lot of time to really rotate. You know, this is a, a B swing of his. And he's basically going to come through here and kind of just punch this ball, really. You know, this is a punch swing, really going up and through this thing, okay? And you can see here the motion, you can, we can pretty much almost, I mean, sort of infer it from what he's doing here. Really get his gap going away from his spine here. And this is basically, like I said, like a punch. And really, really going through this, this swing, okay? This is, again, he didn't get to rotate a whole lot, and he really just punched this thing out, Okay? And he would have a really hard time doing this if he locked his scap on top of his spine. Again, this is an outside pitch, 95 miles an hour, he hits the fence for a double. Like, this is a B swing, but that's a pretty good B swing. And he's able to do this because he has good scap function, really getting this thing around and moving forward and really getting through and extending on this swing. Again, he's not cutting across his ball, but he's staying through it and really driving through it to right field. Really, really good swing. This next one here, just look at the context here. This is 0-1. And, <clears throat> and so there's a runner on second. And this is Adrian Gonzalez. And so this pitch is nasty. Let's just watch the pitch. It's going to really tail away from him at 89 miles an hour. Okay, So Gonzalez here, he has a couple choices. If he doesn't allow his swing to really elongate, his hand path to really elongate, he's just going to swing over the top, and now he's going to be 0-2. Right? But what's, what's what he does? He really goes out and gets this thing and stays through it. I mean, look at that right there. All right, he's really allowed his hand path to get longer in a more elliptical fashion. Okay, so watching this swing, we just look at it. If, if we have no context and saw this on Twitter, we say, oh, man, Gonzalez is really swinging down through this ball. He's got an extension of contact. That's really terrible. But I would say, no, this is great hitting. I mean, he's really allowing, again, that scap to move away from the spine, free movement of the scap to allow his arm to really get into a lot of shoulder extension and really move forward. Um, again, like this is not a swing you're going to make a flip book out of, but this is a fantastic piece of hitting. You know, this is a really, really good job of, again, having a free-moving scap and having control, having command of this movement and staying through this ball and hitting it out. And that's just great, great hitting. And like I said, it's one of my favorite clips. All right, so <clears throat> you know, if, you, if you assess your you're hitting and you look at yourself on video and you're really cutting across the ball and you really lack extension, you know, what do we do? Well... You may just need to improve your uh, scap and protraction, and you just may not be doing it, may not be able to do it well on a, on a movement level. And so if you read a lot of guys like Eric Cressy and Mike Ronald, they talk about it a lot in terms of pitchers because it's really important to get the upper rotation for the chromium space and blah, blah, blah. But it, it's not just for pitchers. It's also really important for hitting, as we just saw. We really want to be able to get that extension. And so a key part of this may just be your posture. Um, so I encourage you to get an assessment, you know, um, sh sh shoulder uh, dysfunction is very, very common. That's simply based on posture. You know, in the general population, we, if you're kyphotic, you can have shoulder problems. In the athletic population, a more common thing we see is flat thoracic spine or flat T-spine. And there's a couple really good resources here by, again, Eric Cressy and a really, really good one from Mike Robertson. So I, I would encourage you to look at those as well. But um, the bottom line here, guys, really um, find someone who knows what they're talking about in terms of the T-spine and, and scap. Because how you're, how you're built, how you present, both statically and how you move dynamically, is really going to set forth some exercises you need to do. If you just hop on the internet and say, hey, good shoulder exercises, good scap exercises, you might come across foam rolling that sounds really sexy, but it may not be right for you, especially if you're flat T-spine. So um, this is a side note. I tried to put this together and how posture affects hitting part three. And it's really pretty complicated based on how the, the spine sits and um, 
and how your scap sits on that. So um, I kind of didn't pull that together. If anyone wants to do a guest post, I'm talking to you, Dustin. So that would be really good. But it's, again, it's, it's pretty complicated. It's more than I wanted to put together. And so, but again, figure out what's right for you and, and get that looked at. That said, I know no one's going to go do that. <laughs> and so, you know, what can we do? Um, like, like the article from Eric mentions, you know, kind of do some brains here. If you can knock out 17, 18 pull-ups and you can't get your arms up and you cut across the ball, you know, maybe give them a break. There's been this big overhead pushing is really bad, blah, blah, blah. And it's maybe gone too far. You know, guys who were just really tight with the lats and just can't get this upper rotation. Uh, upper rotation um figure out how to breathe figure out how to reach you know do some push-ups and um, do some landmine presses figure out how to get protraction figure out how to really go frankenstein and reach far and get that scap moving away from your spine give your lats a break and allow them to lengthen and stretch them out but seriously guys <laughs> talk to someone who's good this is important and um, figure out how to get that scap moving freely okay so, you know, to finish this up, like I said, extension lives, man. You know, maybe not so much an elbow extension, you know, and unfortunately raising your arm up is a shoulder is shoulder flexion, not a shoulder extension. But, you know, I know Mike Trout doesn't get a lot of uh, a rear arm extension, but, hey, he's still going up and through the ball, still allowing allow his, his scap to move forward, and so that's really, really a good thing. I know a lot of people will talk about pinching the scap or loading the scap, and it's not something I talk about a lot because I worry about this locking it down and not getting the scap moving freely. You know, I'm more like of the pitcher's mind where I really want the scap to move freely. So if you're thinking about that, if you're just doing tons and tons of PVC drills on that load and you're just cutting across the ball, give that a break. You know, think about something else. Think about going through the ball. You know, think about chasing the exit path with your barrel. It's a, a quote I got from Steve Carter I really like. Think about finishing your swing up by your shoulders. Just figuring out how to do that. You know, and maybe your body will organize itself to get to that that good position. You know, mentally develop a hatred for rollovers. You know, cutting across the ball, I, I can't stand it. Like I said, it's a super common thing we see in high school players. It's just so bad. Um, you know, really just get disgusted when you roll one over to the shortstop or third baseman if you're, if you're right-handed. So challenge is moving. You load the barrel. You know, gravity's going to try to pull it down more. Try to figure how to get up, uh, get that, ball, that barrel going up and, and chase that exit path. You know, figure out how to hit inside pitches in the air. You know, Carlos Correa, Josh Donaldson, they just drill up a tee where they get to drill a tee really inside and still try to get it elevated. I'm not a big tee guy, but if you're a tee person, that sounds like a pretty good drill. And so take a look at that. I think there was a couple articles on fan graphs or something like that. Again, I come up with a slogan because I just really hate rollovers. It's just such a common thing. People just slicing across the ball, either popping it up in the air or just three hopping it to the shortstop and that's just not going to work and so again develop this hatred for rollovers and part of that is getting an extension guys extension lives um just get your movement good allow your scap to move away from your spine and um get the ball in the air let it fly all right guys